Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. First time, you're welcome to subscribe. Listen, share, uh, share, like, subscribe. Yeah. Existing subscribers, as usual, thank you for your support and for following me and for giving me your comments. Anyway, this morning I was listening to Piers Morgan and he was reprimanding people who didn't support him on Good Morning Britain and he was calling them snowflakes. So I'm like, I've heard that name banded around. What exactly does it mean? Anyway, um, as you know me, I go off, Google it. Snowflake is quite an offensive word. Is actually um, called shortened from Generation Snowflake, and it's those people who are oversensitive, who feel entitled, who get easily offended. And then I wondered, hmm, I wonder if a black person could be called a snowflake, because when you think of a snowflake, you think of white. And um, I was wondering if you could have a black snowflake or if you had a black flake. But anyway, um, my point was is that you know black people are constantly told they have a ship on their shoulder they're told that they're easily offended you know the slightest thing you say they're talking about racism they're talking about when you talk about reparations they have an issue if they talk about slavery they have an issue and for people who do not understand the history they say we're oversensitive and we are um easily offended and they don't know how to approach us and they have to be walking on eggshells but when you think about it i think generally whether you're white or black we're now in a society where everybody seems to be easily offended like i said you know actually piers morgan is um getting booted off because he's offended um that he's offended somebody by talking about gender and we do have, um, I remember Nicki Minaj, she wouldn't go to the BET Awards because somebody disrespected her or said something she found offensive. And what's happening now is that, you know, back in my day, you know, we had to be t um, thick skinned. We had to be tough. We were called the worst names under the sun in my day. And we used to soldier on. We used to have to, you know, just bite our lip and get on with it. I mean, the riots took place when enough was enough. But for the most part, we weren't so sensitive. We And I don't know whether we talked about it, though. Because when you think about people being overly sensitive and taking things personally... How did we used to solve that situation back in the day? I really can't remember. I really think we just became immune to it. And so now, as adults, you know, we hear about it and we have to watch what we say now. Everything is, you know, it's, it's really kind of difficult. You cannot... You don't seem to be able to be free to speak, you know, and I know that with power comes responsibility and I know that you have to be careful not to be tactless and to say things that will offend. But it comes like the slightest little thing. People are offended by it. And then, you know, it turns into a big thing. Nobody seems to be able to rationalise and speak their minds. And then, you know, you're told you live in a free society where there's free speech, but you're not. You're kind of curtailed at every corner. And so when you're thinking about um, the snowflake generation and being easily offended, you know, you can extend that really to, well, they're calling it the millennials. So anybody born, I guess, after 2000. But, you know, I, it's affecting all of us, regardless of what generation, whether we're Generation X, Generation Y, Generation Z. We're all affected by this kind of oversensitivity. Or is it oversensitivity? Do we have a right to be offended and hurt when somebody... Uh, you know what I think it is as I'm speaking? I think it's about speaking up when we're hurt and when we're offended or speaking out whereas before we probably didn't think we had a right or we probably didn't think anyone would listen 
maybe that's what it's about. Maybe it's about people being um, offended by something and now they're speaking out about it. You still get people who are offended who don't speak out about it and they just, you know, go and sulk or whatever they do. But for the most part, I think the younger people are more vocal about things that concern them or things that offend them, whereas um, the older generation, we just used to take it and think, you know, that's the way it is. What is the point of complaining? I don't think we were a complaining generation, and we definitely weren't a generation who sues. Whereas now you have a generation that sues and you can be sued for offending someone now. And I think that is the difference. I think people are so wary about what they say and how they say it because they can be sued. So this generation snowflake, I don't know if they're justified in being called that. Um, I don't know whether oversensitive is being undermined. Oversensitivity is being undermined. You know, and they're not taking people's issues seriously. I mean, when you think about Piers Morgan, he is so self-righteous when he said people have switched and they're a bunch of snowflakes because, you know, they don't want to stand up for their opinion or they're not standing up for him. And I think if anything, he's going to push people away by making statements like that because people are entitled to their opinion. And the more you listen to him and the more you realise how arrogant and obnoxious he's becoming, it's not working. And I think he realises it's not working because when I saw him yesterday, he looked kind of nervous. He didn't seem so cocky. So he had better be careful and he better switch himself around and take a good hard look at what he's saying and how he's saying it. And I mean, a lot of us can. It is difficult if you've got an untrained mouth and an untrained mind to just not to prevent yourself from blurting out stuff. And, you know, some people say, that's just the way I am. I, this is how I speak. You know, and they don't care if they offend. They don't care if they're insensitive. They don't care about other people's feelings. A lot of people are like that. And they feel quite justified in speaking how they want to speak to people and not care how that person feels. But does that make it right? And does that mean that if they um, are not... if and, and the funny thing is, people who speak to people anyhow and who, have, who offend people, they're the ones that are, are easily offended. They're the ones that seem to be overly sensitive. It's really quite ironic. So when you're looking at Piers Morgan, I mean, I can see now that he is he is a bit worried because that's his job. And he's already, he, was, he was already booted out of America for CNN for, you know, a loss of ratings. So, you know, I think you need a certain character. If you add it with a little, maybe a little humour, if he had... I don't even know how he could change because he comes over as pompous. So I don't know how he can change that without, um, well, he wouldn't be Piers Morgan, would he? But the fact of the matter is, I mean, I think it is unfair to call people snowflakes just because they don't, they speak out about what they don't like. And I think that is what it's about. Speaking out about things that upset you, that offend you, and, you know, and people just don't like it. They prefer you to just sit back and take it or just go with the flow. And they're used to people just going with the flow, the status quo, not, not moaning, not saying anything, just taking it all on. And that's what the previous, the predecessors are used to. They're not used to people having an opinion and speaking out on that opinion. And sharing their feelings. We're actually living in a society where people talk about their feelings. Not everybody does. Not everybody has managed to handle that yet. But people more and more are talking about their feelings. And when you watch some of these reality shows, it can be quite uncomfortable listening to people talk about their feelings, especially when they talk about it so quickly and to somebody that they've just met. And then they're telling that person everything about 
what's happened to them and you know how this affects them and how that affects them and you know it does come over as a bit overwhelming you know because you are kind of thinking bloody hell as an older person I wouldn't share that I wouldn't really talk about that I would think that would alienate me from someone but with the younger generation it doesn't seem to it seems that by speaking out about what they don't like what affects them what impacts them what hurts them makes makes them I don't know I, I think it's got something to do with why um, their relationships break down as well because I think because they do come over as fragile and because they do um, speak about too much about who they are before they've actually worked out who they are and instead of building up on their strengths sometimes they um, tend to prey on their weaknesses because some of those weaknesses and regardless of what you've been through over time you manage to overcome that and by sharing that with other people who are not equipped to um, handle or manage those kind of emotions or those kind of experiences you could be putting yourself in vulnerable in hands in the wrong hands and making yourself vulnerable so I don't think it's always good to say exactly how you feel when you feel it but at the same token I don't think it's wise to hold it in so I guess it's about you know having you know knowing how you feel knowing how it affects you are you able to navigate that can you extract yourself from that situation if you can't extract yourself from that situation do you need to talk about it in order to make that situation right and are you in a position to make that difference are you in a situation where people will listen and take on your concerns if you're not is it worth letting people know how you feel only to feel as though nobody cares and nobody's interested and what is the point and that's what causes so many um, mental issues these days that people cannot say what they feel or feel that they cannot say what they feel because they're afraid of judgment they're afraid of criticism and so it can cause mental issues if people do feel as though they can't share their opinions or exactly how they feel so should they be called snowflakes I think it's a silly word myself and I don't think um, you know I think everybody's individual feelings are valid and you know their perceptions are valid to them it might not be valid to you but it's valid to them and they should be honored and that's all I've got to say really so are black can black people be snowflakes or depends how you view a snowflake it's supposed to be somebody who's original unique um, somebody overly sensitive somebody who feels entitled and I guess that can go for any race, gender or colour. That's all for now. Bye bye.